Uh, hello, uh, this is James. I was just making a, a video uh, in honor of my sensei. Uh, I am guess playing Minecraft, but I was just gonna think and build something uh, related, something nice and kind. Uh, I don't really know what to do. But, uh, my sensei, Wade Davis, is uh, leaving uh, uh, the group that I'm in, the uh, Aikido. Uh, sorry, uh, he's uh, leaving after the next class that's coming up, which is the last testing class. And, uh, I'm sad that he's leaving, because, uh, I've known him since I was, I think, sorry, uh, eight, yeah, that's when I started, uh, my Aikido training, so, 14 now, so I've known him for six years, and, uh, it's been a fun time. And I'm glad that I've met him and trained there for so long. Uh, it's really sad that he's leaving, and I don't want him to go at all. <laughs> I'm glad that he's uh, doing what he wants to do. But, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna... I guess. Maybe. I don't know what I could build. Uh, uh, I guess I'll try and build a replica of the dojo that I train in. Try that. Yeah, we've uh, no, no, I'm not in the uh, adult class. This is my first official session. But. My mom was and uh, stepdad were thinking about doing it, but now that uh, Wade Davis, my sensei, is leaving, uh, they're thinking again about not doing it. They might not want to do it. I don't really blame them since he's no longer gonna be there. I wouldn't have. Uh, I wouldn't blame. I would have done the same thing if you know I'd sat in the classes and saw how he teaches and then. He left. So today is actually the last day I'm gonna see him as my sensei in my Aikido training. Uh, I might see him in uh, the Yoshikai main dojo, Reconet dojo that we have in Ann Arbor. But I saw last time he's gonna be teaching the class that I'm a part of. It's really unfortunate. He uh, gave a little bit of a speech last time uh, last time at a class two classes ago uh, and uh, 
I will admit that I actually did tear up and cry after, because I was really sad. Because if it wasn't for that class, I'd have a lot of really boring Mondays. But uh, I have vowed that, uh, promised to myself at least, uh, I'm going to become a. I'm going to work in Aikido until the day I die. Well, until I can no longer do it. And I will do my best and try and become a sensei if possible and teach people and uh, teach them the kind of way that Sensei Davis taught. Because he always made the classes really fun. And he was always really nice. And we played tag in art glasses. Uh, it was uh, kind of like a, it was a freeze tag. But uh, for Aikido, we have a, a kneeling posture. Uh, so in the tag game, you have to go into the kneeling posture, and it was to teach uh, youth students, younger students, the the form. But we've played it ever since, even if it wasn't one of the younger classes. We still play it because we just like that game. It was fun. We normally played uh, tag before just to, I guess, warm up, but I've actually met lots of people and new friends over uh, the years from Aikido. Uh, my friend Hunter uh, from Aikido. Uh, I actually go, to, we go to the same school now. We both go to AALC, Ann Arbor Learning Community. Uh, And uh, my, am, my friend Valen, who also goes there now, well, he went there before I did. Uh, he, I met him at Aikido as well. Uh, Sean, I met him at Aikido back in the beginnings as well. Yeah, Hunter and I have known each other since the beginning of uh, for six years, the whole, the whole time we've been training. We've known each other. And, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Actually, a few people who left, and they left er too early on. I don't really remember their names. I feel really ashamed of not remembering their names, because I talk to them every class once a week for who knows how many months. But it was a lot of fun. I am... Uh, I guess I could turn this into an adver advertisement, but uh, if you ever want to join the Aikido uh, Reckon Ed, just uh, you can go to the Ayana website and check out some of the stuff. If you become a member, you can and uh, join one of the classes. You can. It's actually a lot of cool stuff that they teach us. Uh, they teach us rolls, uh, forward and backward rolls, and actually, Hunter and I will sometimes at uh, school just do some of the rolls, just for fun. Half the time end up hurting ourselves a little bit, but it's still fun. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've been coughing lately. Good. Uh, Not gonna be the same at all without Sensei there. Uh, it actually almost made me wanna uh, quit Aikido. But uh, instead, I used it as a, a drive to make me wanna work harder. Uh, 
keep trying even if I don't do that well. And actually, uh, Sensei has uh, given me a couple comments on how sometimes I won't want to test because I don't feel like I'm ready. And he'd be like, oh, come on, you should test. But he's actually t uh, said to me multiple times that he's actually kind of glad that I don't rush into test. Because Sean uh, did that. And he actually failed one of his tests trying to rush through it. friend Victoria and I, in between youth class and adult class, we'll talk about something really nerdy, like we'll talk about Doctor Who or Invader Zim for, you know, the whole remain, like the whole time while we're waiting. And it's been a lot of fun in that class. I'm pretty sure that anybody else who would join would have tons of fun as well. As long as you know, not breaking any rules, because that's no fun. One of the major points that they push in Aikido is that it's not really a fighting thing. It's two people uh, working towards the same goal. It's not violent or anything. It's just uh, learning how to do things like rolls. It's not like forcing someone down and making them do something. It's about helping them to safely uh, do a role. Or something like that. And that's the thing that people uh, think too often. It's like, oh, fighting! Actually, one time there was a kid that I was working with, and he was uh, pretending to fight while uh, practicing, and they uh, send him to the side because it's not fighting. You can use it like that if you uh, really like want to, but it's mostly just uh, self-control, calm, debt calming. And, uh, you know, people who are really energetic, I used to be super duper mounts off the walls, but since I joined uh, the Aikido class, uh, I've calmed down a lot and I'm not as hyper and crazy. I still have my crazy moments, but at least I'm not jumping off the walls anymore. But it's really calming after Aikido. Actually, now I'm like tired after Aikido, even though I've done it, so I've done some of the stuff a thousand times, it still is tiring. Uh, we have to, uh, we use a, a thing called a Boken, it uh, literally translates to a uh, wooden sword, but uh, we have to, we have uh, practicing techniques with uh, Boken, our Buki, as they will say, and uh, it's a uh, hard to try and hold the uh, buki above your head for a number of minutes. It's not really even... I think it's like 5 to 10 minutes each time we do that. But yeah, it's still so tiring. It always makes me feel kind of weak. <laughs> but, uh, Hunter is now the second highest uh, rank that he can get in the youth class. Uh, even though I think I've been, we've been training just as long, and uh, I'm still uh, far behind because of all the time I spent practicing and making sure that I knew them instead of just memorizing them for the one time. Which unfortunately is what a lot of people do on any kind of test. They're just like, oh hey, I can do this this one time. But then, it won't help you any more after that because the, there's no real point after that because 
you won't remember. You need to remember in order for it to be of any use. I'll actually tell you what I'm doing. So, uh, this is the door that we'd I'd normally come in for Aikido. We'd bow to the front where there's a sign that says Aikido, uh, reading this way, like right to left. Uh, we'd roll out the mats and start our. I mean, the first class, I had no idea what I was doing, but I still felt really confident. Like, I could learn this and not totally fail. And, uh, Sensei really helped a lot with that. Because he was always really supportive and, uh, helpful. He was never like, oh, you can't do this. I don't understand why you're part of this class, like, you know, some of those people who try and teach are like, how come you can't do this? You just, you're not good at anything. Like, you know, the beating down method. But, uh, he was always like, just keep trying and really nice. But, uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm learning a, a, different branch than some people might be thinking if they think Aikido. Uh, this was created by my sensei's 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 sensei. Apparently he was uh, really amazing and awesome at Aikido. Uh, The stories that I hear are uh, really cool and amazing. That uh, one man could just come over, start teaching, and then so many people get influenced just by what he started doing. And it's affected me, and then I'm gonna talk, tell other people about Aikido like right now, and then they're gonna start learning. And then that will continue to spiral out. And then everyone will know what Aikido is. And we'll all start from just one man coming over and just starting to teach people what he knows. Basically, sharing his knowledge and wisdom. Not being greedy with all of his knowledge and be like, oh, I know this thing and you don't. But actually, being the bigger man, as they say, and sharing all of his knowledge. Yeah. And this is uh, making a as close to a replica as I can of the Aikido mat that we work on. Uh, we uh, have a little mat at the corner, and I'll actually get the thing that I'm going to use for the mat. We'd uh, bow at the mat, and they'd always, <laughs> they'd get really mad at the people. They're not really mad, but some people would just like run over and just be like, get on and stand right here, and just continue, like start. But it's uh, not what you're supposed to be doing. It's always it was uh really funny when we uh bow, we say uh, a word called os, uh, and other such things, other words in Aikido. But uh, at the beginning we say os, and for the first like for the one session of the class. Because we go in uh, seasonal sessions, so like fall, winter, spring sessions. Uh, 
for one of the sessions, uh, these kids would always say, oh, at the wrong time. And it was uh, really funny, because we'd like bow, there's certain bows where you don't say anything. And every time we weren't supposed to say anything, they would go, oh, as loud as they could. And Hunter and I, and since we're the, some of the senior students, he was standing here, like around here, and I was standing like over here. And all these people from like here down were just like, oh, and we were just like sitting there laughing. Because they would always do that, and we'd, they would always, somebody would always go over and just talk to all of them, just be like, that's not what you say, we're not, we're supposed to be silent for this pal. And then they'd have it. the next class, they'd yell O's. And it was uh, really funny. Um, uh, sorry, you're going to have to give me one moment. Sorry, my dog needed to be let out. But remember a couple sessions ago, since I transferred over to the adult class, I uh, sometimes will come to the youth class to uh, assist. Uh, but I forgot since it was my first time. Of it, this is my first session. Uh, as a adult and as an adult student, uh, but uh, so I I ran up, uh, bowed, lined up, and did everything properly, <coughs> except for that it was the wrong class. It was the youth class. <coughs> and uh. My friend Sean came up and was just like, "Hey James," and I was just like, "Yeah, like you're not in the uh, youth class anymore, are you?" And I was like, "No." I was like, "Well, you lined up," and I was like, "Oh crap!" And I ran over and uh, went to the back uh, back line. It says the way that they do it is they have like one line like here or here. That goes all the way over, and that's the youth students in the youth class. And then the adult students lined up over here, spread apart. So I ran over, and I was just like, I'm here. And then I had to go back over here. I'm trying to make this as close to as the original as possible. Uh, you know, the original isn't made of squares, so it's a little hard. Uh, um, I'm really sad that uh, Sensei will be leaving the class. He was and always will be my favorite Sensei. I mean, I guess I will have sense other senseis, but my favorite sensei, I guess I'll have to say. And uh, one of the people in the youth class is uh, going to be the new sensei. I don't know how that's gonna be. I'm hoping it will be fine. I'm pretty sure it will be fine. I've known him just as long as I've known Sensei, but there's no real way of knowing how someone's gonna be. I have a feeling he'll do a really good job. I have faith in his talents. I've seen what he can do. He can also be pretty funny at times, but he's normally very serious and he never really. Uh, gets off task. He's always uh, on task, doing what he's supposed to be doing. And it's 
it's uh, really nice to have people who put so much effort forth to do good in the classes because first uh, session of the adult class uh, there are these two boys who like seemed like they really didn't want to be there and were just talking the whole time and it was actually really disrupting for the classes a few times I went over and asked them to stop but one time since I got pretty mad at them because they were still talking throughout most of the class and he said that if they uh, don't wanna if they want to talk then they could uh, not be part of the class and I actually full-heartedly agree with him because it's happened before where I've had to talk to people even though I'm not like a senior ranking student I've had to talk to people and be like hey guys shouldn't be talking this is uh we're in the middle of class and then they'll just be like I don't care I'm gonna talk all class I mean I will talk in the dojo but it's always uh, when we're off the mat, like in between classes or before and after classes. Uh, now today is the the test, the the last ten test with Wade. Uh, I actually really don't want him to go at all. I know it seems kind of selfish to me, at least, to want him to stay back and not do what he wants to do, but it is his choice. And I want him to do whatever he wants and continue and be with his family and support them. Maybe he'll even teach his daughter Aikido. It'd be uh, funny to have that. Yeah, it'd be a family thing. Aikido could be a family tradition. He was in Aikido, and then his daughter is in Aikido, and. Perhaps he'll be able to start something like that. That'd be pretty impressive. I hope that I get to do something as fun as what he gets, like all the stuff that he does with Aikido. He's always upbeat too. Like he's, you'd never see him coming into class all down. He's always very energetic and happy. Uh. He's very happy to be there with us and teaching us Aikido. <laughs> and actually, I think that's really awesome that he's uh, so vibrant about it. When I know that there's tons of people who would come in sad and depressed. Uh, and who wouldn't want to do anything. But he doesn't really care. He'll be part of he'll he'll teach the class because that's what he's there to do basically none of us really talk about what happens outside of Aikido like I don't know what goes on like what Victoria's social life is that much because uh, I'm not like so how's how's the life outside of Aikido uh, we just talk about nerdy stuff and in class stuff and it's a lot of fun in that class I, mean, I really don't want to say to leave it all <laughs> It makes me feel kind of like meanie pants, like, no, Sensei, don't leave. Uh, 
I know that he said that he's leaving too, but I don't want to make him feel guilty at all. I'm actually really glad that he's getting to go and do what he wants to do. You know, not a whole lot of people end up getting to do exactly what they want to do. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. Like, people, like, I want to grow up and I want to uh, become a scientist. Well, now you work at a fast food restaurant. And then you now work at GameStop. And then that's just how it is. But I'm really glad that I got to meet Sensei Davis and that, you know, I don't have some other schmo who doesn't actually care about what they're doing. Because <laughs> if that had happened, I probably would have quit Aikido. I never would have learned all the stuff that I've learned. I do have to say that the most fun thing in Aikido was, like, uh, learning how to do the proper uh, forward and backward falls and all the different rolls. Uh, oh, let's see, all, all of the things that I've, that I can just, uh, rattle off that are rolling type things. Back break fall, which is where you kind of go into a sitting position and then kick your legs up. Uh, Forward roll was there's multiple different ways to do forward rolls. There's one where you get down onto your knees, uh, put tuck, uh, put your hand all the way uh, through to the back of your to the back to your heel, and then push with uh, your left foot if you're putting your right hand in like underneath, and then uh, with your right foot if you're putting your left hand down. Uh, and go into a, uh, and just keep pushing until you roll over, and that was the first way that I learned, and was actually successful at. Uh, the other first one of the the other beginning rolls that you learned is uh, one where you put one knee down, put your hands in a circle. Put your yeah. Put if you're going. Uh, there's two different ways you can sw just switch the feet. Or you put your left leg down. Uh, onto on one knee. Uh, keep the other leg up. Put your hands like. Uh, give me a second. Like this. And then push until you roll over your arms. But uh. The reason why I wasn't that good at that one because I didn't have a whole lot of upper body strength. Uh, and then there's a uh, just going straight into rolls. Uh, you just and it's kind of like how you did before, uh, how we did before when we just put our hands under, but instead when we did it, you just instantly go from standing to hand touching the ground, pushing like kind of. I guess a little bit of a pushy jump thing over onto your arm and across your back to your uh, opposite hip. Um, and that was fun. Uh, but then now I've been having to learn to do jumping forward roll. So instead of touching my hand to the ground, I have to jump into the air, basically kind of start on my shoulder, roll across my back, and then do, like, get up like a normal roll. But, uh, that's really hard, and it's a little bit painful, which basically means that I'm just not doing it right, but I'll get it. Last time I, uh, they were asking us to do a movement, and it required a roll, and I decided to start doing uh, jump, uh, jumping forward rolls. 
but little did I know that they were going to have us keep doing the same rolls over and over and over and over again. So the entire, I think it was, left half of my body was bright red from uh, all the different places I hit. Which means that I really suck at it, but... And I need to keep practicing. But, yeah, it was huh, not the most fun. And apparently, it looks aesthetically good, and looks like a, the proper role, but... I know that I must be doing something wrong, because it's uh, painful sometimes. Uh... And anybody who, like, uh, I'm gonna be giving a copy of this to my sensei, just on a little hard drive. And uh, for him, if he wants to see any of my other videos, any of the other cool stuff that I do, it's not really that cool, but uh, any of the other stuff that I do, uh, check uh, out. The, uh, the channel that I'm posting this on, my YouTube channel that I'm posting this stuff, uh, which is just uh, James Downey. Uh, and also, uh, what my friend Sam and I are doing, my friend Sam from school, uh, uh, we're going to be making uh, another channel, uh, well, two other channels, but uh, it, one of them is going to be Dwarven Gaming uh, Maps, and the other one will be Dwarven Gaming uh, Let's Play, or LP for short, that's what we're usually going to be putting LP, but it stands for Let's Play, I don't know. Um, yeah, we're first going to do like a straight up funny survival, just, you know, goofing around. The I really don't want sensitivity to go. I can't. Because uh, this is the last session that I could have trained, uh, could have taken a test for with uh, Sensei, but uh, I wasn't good enough because I haven't been practicing enough at home, and I really wanted to uh, test this last time just so I could have uh, one last testing with Sensei. Uh, Sensei Davis, of course, I'm gonna get a new Sensei. Da -da -da -da. And I'm tired, that's what I am. Really tired. I just hope that, uh, Sensei, uh, gets to do what he wants to do, uh, where he's moving. I can't remember where he's moving, though, which is irritating. I can't remember stuff. I'm actually really ashamed whenever I can't remember something, like, that seems important to me, at least. Like that. Like, where my Sensei is going to be living for the next who knows how long. Maybe for the rest of his life, I don't know. Now I wonder if by doing Aikido, I've actually increased my life expectancy. Because that would be actually interesting to do the science on that. Figure out how much of a benefit uh, Aikido is. Because uh, I'd actually that'd be really interesting to find out exactly how. Because uh, that would actually help with like like people who want to join Aikido. Because you could tell them 
how much uh, uh, how much longer they'll live or stuff like that. I'm really sorry about that. My dog was barking about who knows what. I actually taught my friends, a couple of my uh, friends from my dad, my dad's uh, area, where he lives. I've taught them uh, how to do a back a break a back break fall, uh, uh, a back break fall. That sounds amazing. Like something you totally want to do. Break, break, break. Uh, I remember when we had a person from another, uh, a sensei from another dojo come over and uh, teach for a day because uh, sensei. Uh, sensei's daughter was just born so she came in and taught for the day and it was just abysmally different like so different between the two teaching styles she was a lot more vigorous and uh, a little bit more rough about the movements like faster a little bit Sorry. Um, this area was a place that we'd uh, go in the little water fountain area. Um, at least once a class pretty much would come over to this drinking fountain. Oh, and that didn't work at all. I don't understand. Sorry for silence. Uh, you know, I think that this is actually one of the sadder moments of my life, is my sensei leaving. Because I've known him for six years. Uh, I remember when he couldn't remember my name when uh, he first started. Uh, when I first started going to Aikido, 
He's like, James, right? And I was like, yeah, and then... If, either, I think he started remembering after the... Fourth session? No, third session. Uh, he started remembering my name, James uh, Downey. Yeah, I think you remember. I think he called me Downey, not Cameron. Can't remember if he called me Downey, Davis, or Cameron. I think it was Davis, and he's Davis as well. I think that's why he could remember my name. He was just like, yeah, we have the same uh, last name. Not last name, but it was just, we have a similar name or middle name. I can't remember what. Because it's not my last name. Why did I say last name? I have. I don't know. I'm just weird. I'm tired. I don't know why I'm so tired either. I didn't even do anything physically active. Yeah, the, the youth class will be starting in about an hour from now. It is currently like 5.05, .05 approximately. No, I don't know exactly. I'm kind of glad that it's the test though, because for half of the class you're not really doing much. You're basically half the class, even if you are testing, most of the class is you watching other people test. And actually, you see how this is kind of dim in here? This is actually how it is in the actual building. It's kind of dim. Over here, there's a staircase. Yeah, we, uh, we go up in, uh, we go at Q ranks it was? Yes, Q. And, uh, it goes in, uh, like, reverse order, so instead of, like, one being the first, one is the, like, first Q, that's the highest. Let's, I think, like, black belt, and there's, like, such and such of this of first and that's like all the other belts it's like seven something I can't remember I don't remember how many black belts there are either but I remember ninth Q is the first test no it's it's you know it goes ninth junior eighth eighth junior seventh seventh junior sixth and then sixth which is where I am uh, yeah, Junior 6th. Sorry, uh, Junior 6th. And, uh, no, Junior 6th, 6th, uh, Junior 5th, 5th, uh, ju uh, Junior 4th, 4th, which I think is around where Hunter is, like, 4th, uh, Junior 3rd, 3rd, uh, Junior 2nd, 2nd, uh, Junior 1st and 1st. I don't think I've actually really gotten too terribly hurt on the mat. Yeah, I don't think I've gotten hurt at all on the mat, actually. I think I've always uh, been safe when being on the mat. 
I've never broken a bone on the mat. Well, I've never broken. I've only broken a bone once, anyway. But uh, uh, I think the worst. Yeah, the worst injury was the whole jumping rules. I think that's actually the time that I've gotten the most hurt uh, ever in Aikido. And that wasn't even really that bad afterwards. But I remember uh, uh, when Sensei rode in his motorcycle the first time to Aikido. Like, oh, Sensei has a motorcycle. It didn't even seem like such a big shock to me. And then uh, one time, my stepdad, uh, Jason, he rode in. Uh, he, he we drove in, drove, drove, drove in on uh, the scooter, the moped that we have. And uh, Sensei was like. Oh, you ride too? And they started talking. Basically, uh, most of the class, well, not most of the class because he was teaching, but like most of the time outside the class, like before and after, just talking up uh, motorized vehicle talk, which I know, which I knew and know nothing about. Except you know, like engine, what? makes the thing go because <laughs> you know I'm skilled like that uh, you know the front door because actually the front door was uh, would be through here over around down a staircase and then the staircase finishes going down this way turn and then there's the front door, and then it has like Aikido class this way, and then you go in, turn, do, 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 down the hall. And there's like, actually, there's an entire new hall, like so. Right here, this is like a completely different hall. Walk in through this door. Uh, a sensor. Wait, you'd walk walk in, and then there'd be a sensor and it turned on. Then you walk into the Aikido class out of the front. Uh, put your shoes here. You take off your shoes, and if it wasn't the, uh, your class, they had mats. Little like mats. That I guess are kind of like this. You go sit on a mat and wait. And there's actually some chairs on these stairs for chairs. Right, this will probably look the best. mats here and you just sit on these and watch the class uh, I remember when Victoria my friend first joined uh, it was really funny because she always wore a robot shirt that had like aliens and robots on it it was always really funny, just because we were supposed to, if we didn't have the proper attire, we were supposed to wear 
uh, uh, white shirt and white pants. But instead she wore a robot shirt. A robot and alien shirt. She wore like every class too. It was kind of funny. Uh, actually, I, I saw a picture <coughs> in the Reconite catalog. It was for the youth Aikido. And I looked at it, and it was Hunter and me. Hunter and I. Uh, back when we were in the youth class. Like, in the beginning. Like, when I first joined. When we both first joined. Uh, and it was hysterical to see Hunter, who is so, like, tiny. Like, we were both, like, really young. I mean, I guess if I think about it, I was eight, so... It's not really that surprising that at the age of eight, I mean, Hunter was six. Or, like, seven. I can't remember how old Hunter was. That, uh... He was so tiny. <laughs> and he all, looked all like childish and really kitty. But he was, and now that I see him today, he looked like growing a short little stubby thing that he calls a mustache. And it's just really weird how much of a difference there is. And how long I've actually known Hunter. Actually, I found out when I first went to... When I uh, started going to AALC at the beginning of this year. Uh, I found out that I had apparently gone there before. Because I remember Valen. And he bullied my friend. And, uh... I think I, I threw like a giant rock at him or something and got in trouble. Uh, but looking back on it, I'm just like, what the heck? Like, when I think, when I saw Valen from then, and I see Valen now, the two people don't associate. Like, I don't think, oh, hey, look, that's Valen. I think, hey, there's that guy that I know now, that I've never met before. And in all actuality, it's Val. But actually, we're really good friends now. <clears throat> actually, at the end of the year, him and I uh, did become friends. And uh, we traded Pokemon cards, because, you know, Pokemon was just a thing back then. You didn't have Pokemon cards. You weren't cool. But actually, we had this whole thing going where we were part of Team Aqua, which is something from uh, Pokemon. And we actually, like, all played along with this. Until, you know, it seemed like it was real. Except for that it obviously wasn't because it was Pokemon. It's really weird looking back on times like that. Like you hadn't even, I hadn't even really fully developed as a person. I didn't really know who I was was even at all. I mean, I knew who I was even less than I do now. Like uh I'm still into Pokemon and stuff, but It's not as big to me anymore. It's not, you know, like the core thing that I do. Sorry, I don't want people walking in and uh, disrupting the video. But actually, I think that that should fortunately be the end of this.
Yeah, actually now looking at this, this looks a lot like how I remember the Aikido class being. Walking into this strange hallway, turning in, this big room, giant blue mats in the center, little mat here, actually that go here. Bowing. First time I came in, I don't even think I, I don't, I don't know anything at all. I came in and I was just like, what do I do? I don't know anything. And then I, I think I asked Sensei, like, hey, what am I supposed to be doing here? And he was like, oh, child, you do not know. I shall teach you. And I was like, oh, thank you. How are you? It's very nice of you. As you know, the small, hyperactive, crazy child I was. Yeah, and actually now that it's the summer session, we have like a fan here and a fan over there. One fan here, one fan on the opposite side. And like, Sensei's got like two fans over here. Because this is like Sensei's little, uh, uh, Boken rack. Because he has his own, like, bookies and other stuff. Wooden, wooden, I guess, weaponry, you could say. Even though I really don't want to. I guess I'll use this stuff for the rack. There. Yeah, there. He have his own little thing, and he, like, has his three, we his three things that he puts over here. This door would be close to two. This door was always closed. <clears throat> and since I has the keys, so back when I was in the youth class, I'd come over and just be like, I'd, I'd get there really early and there's like nobody there and it's like, okay, I'm gonna open the, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, and then these are the other mats that would go in that the mat room. And they're these circular mats that we'd always just prop up on the side, like this. I know that this is all really dispro disproportionate. Because, you know, if you took all of this, rolled it up into two, you couldn't get it in here. That's not. Because, like, these mats would all fit in that one room, but, you know, they obviously don't. So, yeah. And then the uh, big Boken rack, which is actually would be like this, I guess. Which should be properly heighted. Uh, it would be like this. Gonna be leaning up against that, so it has space. And whenever you uh, exit the mat too, you'd also go bow to the front sign, uh, and back off the mat, and then go grab your shoes, grab your book and go to the door, bow, walk out, and then go back home. That's what we always did. Well, and still will do. Just you know with a different person teaching. And, uh... Story of my life, I guess. Or at least some of it. Uh, I don't think you want to continue to hear me jabber on about... Ikido and uh, all of my fun times in Aikido. So I will talk to you later.
Oh wait, there he is. Okay. 